Just, I mean, this, I, I've been asked a lot this week, uh, particularly by Chinese uh, uh, members of the press, um, is the economic relationship still a primary source of stability in the U.S.-China relationship? And um, it should be. Uh, we have a very robust economic relationship, highly interdependent by design. Uh, we have an enormous trading relationship. China's our, I guess, our third largest export market. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly one of our largest trading partners. Um, you know, and, and by and large, when you break down the, uh, what we produce and sell and what they produce and sell, there's a lot of complementarity. Um, that said, this is Washington, D.C., and sort of the basic economic logic doesn't always apply. And there are serious challenges in that relationship. Um, this in a time when, when uh, jobs equals trade equals China, um, this is a very difficult time for uh, President Hu to come uh, to the United States, particularly when the Chinese public and many of the Chinese leadership are not particularly interested in, quote, doing something, end quote, uh, for the Americans on, on trade and economic issues. That's rather a challenge. Um, the, the issues are pretty straightforward. You've got um, uh, the president has defensive issues on uh, primarily on currency um, and, and the impact of currency on, on U.S. jobs, uh, but also uh, you know, uh, 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 suggestions that other parts of the Chinese economy are subsidized and therefore directly compete unfairly with, with uh, U.S. production. Um, and you've got uh, market access issues, tremendous market access issues for a business community that has been China, that has carried China's uh, political water here in Washington for most of the past 20 years. Uh, so, are, when, so when the business community begins to become unhappy or begins to find the competitive environment in China that much more difficult, it, le it seems less and less likely and inclined to want to uh, do something for the Chinese here in, in Washington. So, so pretty difficult. Now, what the administration has been hoping against hope that there would be a, um, a, a shift uh, in the, in the, uh, the valuation of the remnant B in the positive way, uh, more than the, the, the simple numbers are to date for this year. Uh, or since, uh, since the announcement of, uh, of revaluation or reapplication of flexibility was made uh, earlier this year. Um, uh, there's a bit of hair pulling going on in Beijing from the, the contingent not only at the embassy but the heavy USG contingent that went over to, to China earlier this week. Um, there's a concern about uh, what can we do on the, uh, on the market access issues, particularly as there are other things that we can do on the indigenous innovation challenges that our companies have, some of the uh, intellectual property rights issues and others. Although I think the administration in China will largely point back to the results of the Joint Commission on Commerce and Trade that took place in December and say, well, here's, here's where we got those things uh, uh, accomplished. Um, and then there's been a lot of hope, uh, particularly from some larger companies that that President Hu's visit would be accompanied by significant commercial uh, transactions, and that really hasn't uh, panned out to date, and it looks with just a few days left before the visit that it's going to be very difficult to, to put in place a very significant order that uh, the administration can point to and say, look, see, China equals uh, trade equals jobs in a good way. Uh, so it's so, so, so very, fairly uh, challenging environment for the President um, and President Hu to come into. And uh, um, I'm not sure that um, at this point that one can say that uh, the economic relationship is a primary source of stability. In fact, one might argue that it's shifted into uh, that the frictions in that relationship uh, have begun to define the relationship in a fairly negative way. Um, again, not always appropriately, but uh, that's certainly the, uh, the, uh, the suggestion. Um, President Hu, I know, will, will um, try to showcase uh, the beginning of what, uh, what everybody uh, outside the Beltway hopes is a wave of Chinese investment into, into this country. And I, I think there are some suggestions that, that uh, uh, there may be hope in that direction, but I'm not sure that um, some of the, 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 the messaging there is going to be effective enough to overcome uh, a lot of the negativity surrounding currency and, and, uh, and some of the market access questions. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll stop there. Bring them back open to questions. Karen.
Um, I'd, like you, I think I've been assuming that the new new uh, new makeup in Congress makes action, whether it's legislation or other or other activity in Congress on currency, that much less likely. Um, and the Chinese certainly have made that calculation and believe that uh, they've all taken breathed a big sigh of relief that well we've got you know, some good old pro-business Republicans in in the House now and and that's going to carry us and, and make sure that that our water continues to be carried. Uh, I, I just spent the pre last weekend at a new members uh, retreat um, and um, I think the Chinese have made a serious miscalculation and I think my assumptions about the likelihood of uh, of of currency legislation um, having been reduced were wrong. Uh, this, is a, this is a crowd that is um, anxious to do something and uh, to quote one incoming member, um, we want, we want uh, the U.S. government to get off its ass so on this issue. Who would lead the charge? Well, I think the usual suspects still will lead the charge, um, but there are Um, uh, without uh, without naming names, uh, th I think there are there are uh, quite a number of the incoming members that are that are pretty pretty serious about the issue. 